Well, welcome to the California UDL meetup today. My name is Fred Cochran, and I am a coordinator at, uh, at, for continuous improvement and support at San Joaquin County Office of Education, uh, and also a proud member of the California UDL Coalition. Thank you for joining our session today. We have uh, three outcomes for today's meetup. The first one is to provide networking opportunities to learn more about UDL in California. The next is to learn about the goals of the California UDL Coalition and its partners. And finally, to obtain information about UDL learning opportunities, including the UDL IRN Learning Design Platform. But I have one important announcement before we begin, is that all of the links for the resources that we will share today will be uh, shared with you in the Zoom chat box uh, by the end of our session. I am honored to be your MC today and to introduce our panel members from the California UDL Coalition, including CAST and multiple statewide county offices of education. So I'm going to uh, just let you know who, the, who these panel members are. First of all, uh, we have Kathy Wall, who's the Director of, inclusion, of the Inclusion Collaborative from Sa uh, Santa Clara County Office of Education. And she's joined by Song Park, who is also from Santa Clara County Office of Education, who's the Coordinator for Inclusive Education and Technical Support. Um, it's a great honor to have Dr. James Basham, Senior Director of Learning and Innovation at CAST. And also joined with him is another CAST uh, uh, friend, Jennifer Levine, uh, Director of Professional Learning at CAST. Um, my friend, Dr. James McKenna from LA County Office of Education, Coordinator for Inclusive Design. Of course, with him is Carol Higa, from LA County Office of Education, Director of Special Education. And I don't want to forget uh, our two special friends from uh, California Department of Education, Jen Buzilich, uh, Education Administration, uh, I can't say, Administrator, Curriculum Frameworks and Instructional Resources Division of CDE. So that's a, say that five times. And Richard Gifford, uh, Education, Programs Consultant, Curriculum Frameworks, and Instructional Resources Division of CDE. Wow. So without further ado, um, uh, we are going to uh, begin uh, the panel discussion. And Dr. James McKenna is going to lead off the uh, discussion. And he will give us um, uh, you will start, speak to the grassroots history behind the UDL Coalition and how we got to where we are today. So welcome Dr. McKenna and take it away. Thanks Fred. Um, so the UDL Coalition uh, in its earliest form started uh, a few years ago when I was at the, the first MTSS PLI, the Professional Learning Institute uh, they held uh, down in Orange County. And I met the wonderful Pam Tuppy and Rhonda Marriott from the Orange County Department of Ed. And they were holding a session, like an ed camp session that involved UDL. I was, and I was the only person at LACO at the time that was working around universal design for learning. So I was like, Yay, there's other people who talk about this stuff. And so they're locked into, and if you knew about the SUMS initiative, the MTSS work was being run out of Orange County and Butte County. So we started some you know, email conversations and I said, hey, you have a network of contacts at every county office for this MTSS. What if we came up with a Google form and sent it around and say, can we find the one or two lone nuts in every county office that is doing this so we could start working together? Because I don't have a lot of people that I can, I can really run this by. I hadn't met anybody at CAST yet. And so they said, that's, that's great. So we put out a, a call and I think our first meeting, we had like 40 people. And one of those was Fred Cochran. And Fred volunteered to be... Uh, to run the next meeting. So quickly it became, you know, Pam, Rhonda, Fred and I, they're running this budding California, you know, county office UDL network. So it's just for county office folks. Um, 
And as time went on, um, I became aware of, like, there's, we were having these growing number of state grant projects around UDL. So I had been asked to support the Supporting Inclusive Practices mm -hmm. program to do some UDL uh, boot camp works with, with their folks. Meanwhile, learn about uh, Kathy and Sung and Kelly and all the great people up in Santa Clara that are running CA1, you know, equity where UDL disrupts inequities. And then we've got open access running out of Placer and they're using, looking at UDL and accessibility and assistive technology. And I just, so we started to say, hey, what if we started working together instead of in parallel? And each one of these programs had relationships with either the Implementation Research Network or CAST or both. So this all came to a head in 2018, I think it was 2018 or 20, at the CISC Symposium in Anaheim. And so that's, we were first able, we started talking in the IRN Summit in Florida, then we met in Anaheim and we were able to have a conversation with Santa Clara, Placer County, LA County, Support Inclusive Practices, Linda Gerstle and Jen Levine from, from CAST, um, and then put it out to the county office network and then Bradley bought in Orange County and San Joaquin. And so now it's grown where we have this, this robust network where we have the national and international groups of the, of the implementation, the UDL implementation research network and CAST. We've got Placer County office, LA County office, Orange County, San Joaquin, um, Santa Clara, and the Supporting Inclusive Practices Grant Project, Open Access, CA1, and we've recruited in our wonderful friends at CDE, um, Richard and Jen, and the system improvement leads. I'd been doing some work in the West San Gabriel Valley, so Jackie Williams, uh, she, you know, she brought in her folks, and now we've got this, this group, and that county office network is now open as the California UDL network, so we can have our virtual meetings open to any and all that, that want to be part of it, and that's really grown, and what's been great to get guidance and, and contact with, with CAS and the IRN, because we're not the only group out there you know, trying to, to rally together across these different things. So, Jamie, do you want to speak to some of some of that work that's happening across the state, across the country? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm glad you can uh, join us here this, this afternoon or this evening uh, for those of us who are not out enjoying uh, California weather at this point. Um, also, we're not in the smoke, so we also appreciate that. But um, you know, UDL has had its roots for about 22 years, uh, and we've been implementing and supporting implementation at CAST and through the UDL implementation network throughout that time. Um, but what we have found in doing this work is that as groups kind of come together and collaborate to work towards designing environments and learning experiences that are accessible and really designed for all students from the very beginning, uh, and taking that notion of UDL, if you, don't know, uh, if you don't know a lot about UDL, we can send you some resources on that. We've already put some in the, already put some in the chat, but we can send you a few more. Um, but we've had our roots and we've been growing up and as we've kind of have, have been implement, implementing, not only in the US, but beyond, we have found that networking individuals from different groups together. So bringing in uh, educational leaders, educators, policy makers, um, and uh, state leaders into a group to really kind of problem solve and really kind of conceptualize what proactive design for all students means to be in an inclusive environment, uh, given that we're uh, talking about inclusion here today, right, um, is critically important. And so we were just thrilled when California, uh, folks from across the state of California stepped up to say, hey, look, we're trying to uh, merge our forces together to, to develop a, a grassroots coalition that's gonna come together to really support uh, the network and in, in implementing in, in that sort of uh, way that we've seen work in other states such as uh, Michigan's doing some of that work. There's a lot of work going on in New Hampshire right now, uh, Florida, and then also places throughout the, throughout the globe. In fact, the, implementate, the UDL Implementation and Research Network has people working and collaborating on five different continents. So it's, it's absolutely amazing. And so we're just absolutely thrilled that California's uh, come to pull this together. And 
we at CAST are very happy and, and, and I'm going to hand it off to Jennifer here because Jennifer has the key role, I believe, in really kind of supporting and moving through and supporting the implementation throughout the coalition and throughout that network. So Jennifer, do you want to talk about uh, the implementation of UDL a little bit? Sure. Um, so I, I'm not sure how many of you um, know about the eWig projects, which let's see if I can do it on the spot, are the Educator Workforce Improvement Grants. Um, but CAST is, I got it, all right. <laughs> CAST is um, working with the UDL Coalition to uh, really try to support uh, educators throughout the entire state of uh, California to learn about how UDL can support um, inclusive literacy practices and to train educators again across the entire state to be able to implement UDL in their environments. Um, I am, you know, the reason I came to UDL is because I am very inspired by the view that UDL takes on students and student learning. The, one of the underlying foundational concepts of UDL is that there is no such thing as average. Every single human being is completely unique. Every single human being has their own um, traits in terms of how they learn, how they interact with the world, how they engage in their learning and that none of those traits none is better or worse there's just we are all variable we're all different and one of the underlying underlying concepts is that um, if a student isn't learning it's because the lesson hasn't been designed in a way to support that student so traditionally i think um, education comes at uh, looking at students who aren't learning by putting the blame on the students or on the families. Uh, little Susie didn't learn in this lesson because she wouldn't sit still. And UDL comes at this from what sounds like just a tiny little shift, but in my mind is such a profound shift that Susie didn't learn in that lesson because the lesson required her to sit still. So it's not that Susie wouldn't sit still, it's that she was required to do something that, that impeded her learning. And um, so I think that one of the uh, highlights of UDL is this way in which uh, it values uh, each, all individual differences and seeks to, um, I guess, almost celebrate those individual differences and to celebrate it by allowing all students, no matter where they come from, how they learn, to be engaged deeply in rigorous curriculum that challenges them to think and learn. So CAST is so excited to be involved. I, you know, we've been involved, involved peripherally in all kinds of sort of hit or miss projects that, that have been going on around California for the past five or eight years. But to really be able to dive in deeply to this with you all to, um, to fight for this battle for, for equity in education is really exciting. And we're really honored to be part of, part of this group with you all. Um, so Richard Gifford, I'm going to pass it on to you from there. Hi, everyone. So uh, I, I was asked to speak to um, kind of the big picture of UDL uh, from, from the CDE perspective. And so I would just say, you know, it's, it's absolutely a priority at CDE. And, you know, one indication of that is that myself and Jennifer Buslich, you know, are, are, have been um, really appointed to, to be the, li the liaisons for CDE. Um, on the California UDL coalition, coalition on UDL yes. and uh, uh, targeting UDL as it applies to distance learning. Um, one was more a general webinar um, um, in how, how UDL principles could be applied in distance learning and one focused on UDL distance learning and early learning and, and Kathy Wall and um, Kelly Wiley um, 
who are here today uh, both worked on uh, that or partnered with us on that project. So I, I couldn't Absolutely. believe I forgot Thank you that. for adding that. No, I did too. Thank you for adding that. <laughs> Uh, we do want to welcome you to, to ask any questions that you may want to uh, ask us. Um, you can put them in the chat box. Um, I think we're doing pretty good on time, so um, we're, uh, we're happy to do that towards the end of the presentation as well. So thank you, Carol, for putting the uh, slides up. Um, by the way, these slides will be shared as Google Slides uh, with you. Um, as soon as I'm uh, through going through them and I will add them. Um, so it's pretty exciting, all the offerings that are coming available uh, this year and next year on UDL. And um, the first one that I wanted to highlight uh, is from LA County Office of Education. And these are two wonderful resources that Dr. McKenna put together, UDL in 60 Minutes, and the UDL boot camp online. Um, these are, we're not gonna click the links to these because we, I have 10 slides to go through, but, um, but we want you to know that they're all hyperlinked so that when you do pull up your version of the slides, you're welcome to find the resources so easily. Um, but anyway, I, I use uh, especially the UDL in under 60 minutes and share that with colleagues because it is a great introduction. Um, our friends at Orange County, Department of Education. Uh, Pam Tuppy couldn't be here today and Rhonda Marriott. They're such good friends and they have such a, a big heart around uh, sharing their UDL resources. Um, they helped me get started and um, I, I always appreciate them. But they did a series of, of uh, offerings, UDL 101, 201, and 301. And so you're welcome to um, take a look at those. They usually have hyperdocs built in and they have so many wonderful uh, resources there. So uh, our next um, slide is from our friends at Placer County Office of Education. And um, just to let you know, um, where I'm located in San Joaquin County, um, we are part of the uh, uh, GeoLeads uh, region. And I believe we have 14 counties and I, uh, get to facilitate the UDL huddles for uh, those 14 counties. And so it's um, my pleasure to share what uh, our colleagues at Placer uh, are sharing opportunities for um, uh, deepening your understanding of uh, UDL. And uh, Catherine Fierra is also a colleague and friend of mine that helps me out with the huddles. And she's more than happy to help you. But if you need any help, I can also help you. So um, uh, I'll be sure that my uh, email's in the uh, chat box as well. Um, Santa Clara, of course. Why weren't you first here? Um, they have all of their uh, trainings on UDL and uh, Kathy Wall and uh, my friend Sun Park have just done a wonderful job in uh, sharing these resources on um, UDL and inclusive design. And I want to say that this summer was my first opportunity to work with preschool teachers and, and do uh, uh, modules on UDL in the preschool environment. So I was uh, really excited. Um, and um, Richard, I was glad that you shared that information and Jen about UDL being in the framework because it has been in all of our frameworks. It's, uh, I, I can find it. <laughs> for you if you ever want to find exactly where they are. Um, so thank you, Kathy and Sung, for all the work you do. Um, next, um, our, our good friends from CAS have wonderful resources to share. And um, uh, I don't know if Jen or um, Jamie, you want to speak to any of those? Or do you just, or do they speak for themselves? Jennifer, go ahead. I can jump in on them. Um, so the first one here, UDL Rising On Demand, we had uh, no bias here. Um, we had an awesome <laughs> virtual conference this yeah. summer on um, UDL and equity. So we um, at the conference kind of launched our, the, the UDL the guidelines were created. The very, very first version that was ever put out was initially called version 1.0 because the idea behind the guidelines was to constantly be iterating on them and improving them 
and um, our UDL Rising Conference this summer was sort of the kickoff of our next iteration on the guidelines where we want to be um, the guidelines originally really focused on equity from an ability disability standpoint and we um, wanted to start thinking much more about the intersectionality of ability and disability with race, social class, gender, sexual orientation, etc. And so um, we invited experts from all over the country, experts in the field of equity, to talk with us about kind of what they saw as the pressing um, uh, ideas to, to keep in mind when thinking about how to implement UDL for equity in the classroom. So um, that is available. I think, Jamie, did you put it in the um, chat somewhere? I can put, I'll put it in if you didn't already, yeah. but um, that's available to, to purchase. You can see all, almost all of the sessions. We had one or two people who preferred not to have them recorded. Uh, but pretty much all of the sessions are there, and I think they're amazing. Can I uh, the in? next, yes. I, I attended, and I want to tell you, it was, it's worth every dollar. It is, uh, a lot of emotion is packed into this uh, webinar, and you really uh, walk away rethinking a lot of things that maybe you <laughs> didn't think about before. So I strongly re uh, recommend it. I loved it. That's, all, that's awesome to hear, Fred, because that, that was honestly the goal. It was to really start to push all of our thinking into, um, you know, it's, it's very easy to be self-congratulatory about all the great work that's going on because there, there really honestly is a lot of great work going on. Um, but to really push ourselves to address, you know, where are we not doing well? Where does there still need to be change? And who are the experts that can support us um, in making that change? So. Uh, yeah, shameless promotion there. Uh, the next three bullet points, uh, CAST offers um, some online courses. They're all, all of these are introductory level. The difference between each course is uh, whether or not it is, um, actually between the second and third bullet point, or just whether or not it's self-paced or guided. Um, but the, those are both introductions to universal design for learning. Uh, the third one is assumes um, some background knowledge about universal design, uh, but really talking about how emotion plays out in the classroom and can either support um, or be a barrier to learning and how as the designer of a lesson uh, that you can utilize a, a student's emotional state to really uh, support them to learn better. So I will put some links. I'll have to go find them and then I'll throw them into the chat for you if you're interested in any of those courses. Um, and if you have any questions about them, you feel free to throw them in the chat and I'd love to answer. Um, and I added all the resources so I didn't forget. So um, the slides and everything are there now. So um, um, great. Thank you so much, um, Jen, for doing that. And there's more. <laughs> Did you know you had a second slide? <laughs> But it, they speak for themselves, or? Um, so, yes, I'll just put it, I'll just put a link in. The um, top three um, things that you put in there are all what traditionally would have been live face-to-face -face trainings at CAS. We, we call them the artist formerly formerly known as at cast trainings. Um, so we've been doing them virtually for the past six months. Uh, but again, great ways of either learning about what UDL is, um, or if you really already feel like you have a, a hold on UDL, but maybe you're an administrator in a school or a district and want to think about uh, wider implementation. Our implementation academy is new, maybe from about a year ago, and goes deeply into um, kind of looking at both implementation science and improvement science and how to utilize those to support your UDL implementation. And the last bullet point there is um, we created, so traditionally we, uh, one of our main ways of delivering 
training is live and in person. And as you may have noticed, there's been a little bit of change in our country recently, and we have not been able to do the live and in person trainings. So we created um, a digital learning series, which um, arguably might be better than the live and in person trainings that we've been doing. And so we have um, an intro to UDL. Currently, we have an intro to UDL in a 102, kind of the, the intermediate level. We hope to also create a leadership academy um, and an implementation academy virtually. But these are um, they're very interactive virtual sessions that you do on your own and then are supplemented with live virtual support from a UDL implementation specialist. So again, I'll go through our link. But if you have any questions, Ali Berg right there at the bottom, aberg at cast.org, or Patrice Morrison, P. Morrison at cast.org, um, are the perfect people to ask about learning more about that. Thanks, Fred. Do I have any more or am I, am I free? I think you're free. All right. <laughs> I think you're free. Jamie may have to talk later. I'm not sure, though. Uh, <laughs> so, um, well, there are a couple of other events that uh, maybe you should speak to. I could speak <laughs> to the summit maybe a little bit. Yeah, so uh, I, we have some exciting uh, things coming out of the UDL IRN, which is part of CAST for kind of the membership uh, uh, network of uh, volunteers that work come around the globe to support uh, implementation and scale around UDL. And our next uh, event that's actually coming up is actually uh, the Great Lakes event. And so the Great Lakes event is normally held in the Great Lakes. Um, <laughs> but this year, the exciting piece is, is that it's going to be held, um, of course, online. And so uh, people from all over the world get are able to attend it. You can learn more about the Great Lakes event by going to, to the UDL Implementation and Research Network's website. It's right there. Um, I just put it in the chat. Um, and you can learn about the Great Lakes experience. The One of the fun thing that's gonna happen, there's a couple exciting things actually about the Great Lakes experience that we're trying. Uh, the first thing is, is that there's gonna be virtual school tours. Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be a virtualized school tour so that people can sign up and participate in a, a school school tour. It's been a long day. I've been saying you know a couple of times today. The other thing that we're trying and that's been requested before is that um, uh, the nice thing that we do at our regional events is we have one day that's really uh, receiving information, kind of more of a conference sort of style, conference sort of feel. Whereas the second day is really designed for you. It's really designed for school teams and for groups to kind of come together and do some forward planning for what they think implementation is going to look like in their area. Um, and so what's been requested there is that we have someone as a personal conference coach uh, so that a, a personal conference coach can work with a, a team and support them in that, in that effort. Of course, many of the districts and, and uh, regions in California have their own coaches that can sit with them. And we'd highly recommend you using your own sort of regional people, especially after uh, when CAS gets to work with more people uh, throughout the state. Um, and, and so that's our next uh, sort of online experience. But, but here's what's important. The, the UDL IRN's 2021 International Summit, which is kind of the global event around UDL, uh, we have announced our dates for next year. We're April 12th through the 14th. Uh, we're planning for an online event. However, we are also building ways where uh, given safety and everything coming together, there's also ways where you can have your own personalized learning hubs that kind of meet face to face. There's a call for proposals out right now. So if you have your if you have exciting things to share about UDL or what's going on in your neck of the woods, whether you're kind of just beginning in the beginning phases of it and you wanna share your stories around that, or you've been doing it and working through implementation for uh, a number of years, there's something there for you to share. We'd encourage you to submit an app, uh, uh, a proposal to, to speak at this event. So yeah, I wanna chime in there, Jamie. Um, I was fortunate to uh, participate in the On Demand Summit and um, it was so well organized. Uh, just kudos 
to you guys. Uh, Mackenzie is absolutely a breath of fresh air and wonderful to work with. Um, I learned a lot. It was my very first time doing an on-demand summit in, in this format. And um, I, I just loved it. So anyway, I, I welcome people to find, you know, reach out to your colleagues and put your proposals out there because it is uh, really uh, exciting, especially when you, um, you have folks from Ireland or Japan or New Zealand, they're on the call with you and you have all these great ideas out there. So, you know, it, it is really an experience. It's like getting to travel from your chair, I guess, whatever. So. That's great. I lo we love hearing that. Yeah. And we always hear that about Mackenzie. So oh my gosh. We hear great things about her all the time. She's amazing. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, I'm sorry this is a bit blurry, but this was a, 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 an addition I added. Um, James was talking about the California UDL network, which was originally the California County Offices of Education UDL network. Um, so we are pleased that we, uh, our subcommittee in the UDL coalition is the UDL network. And we have uh, arranged for three uh, dates, as you can see in front of you, October 29th is coming up um, and 11.30 to 12.30. Then you can see February and May as our, our two other meetings are at different times. Um, but we're Rhonda, uh, Marriott, and Pam. Pam and I uh, will co-facilitate. Uh, Rhonda pretty much helps us with agendas and getting things together, and we just love her to death. Um, but now it's open to all educators, as uh, James mentioned, because we need we need to broaden the network and we need to do um, uh, get more folks involved because this, like Jen uh, said earlier, this is. This is important work for California. Um, if you can go back just one, one time for me, um, I just want to mention that we have a special guest speaker, Katie Novak, will be joining the uh, October 29 uh, call and she'll share a couple of tips, two or three tips about uh, UDL and in hybrid and virtual models. Uh, we'll also have some UDL voices from the field. We always try to have someone uh, presenting, and I think it, uh, we're presenting actually some distance learning uh, things that we're doing at our county. And then we always share resources and, uh, and provide updates uh, for the California UDL Coalition. And the Zoom link is there, um, but in the actual slides, uh, it is hyperlinked and you can actually, um, you should be, or I added the hyperlink, I believe, in the chat box. So the flyer is there. If you want to share it with anyone, it's fine to do so. Um, James, I'm going to ask you to speak to this. Next slide. Can you see the coalition email list? Yeah. So, yeah, if you want to stay in touch with all the things that we're doing, um, and I know some of you try to fill this form out ready, and it was asking for a number. I believe I fixed that. So thank you, Kathy, that for letting me know first, and then Susan for testing it out. Thank you very much. Uh, if you want to stay in touch with us, and and get and you know share for the resources when we're going to meet up, or the the network meetings, you know other things that we're pushing out uh, as as we expand our work across the state, um, please you know, sign up and then pass this on, you know, to, to other interested folks, people in your district, anybody who wants to, to be involved in this work at, at some level, you know, it was just to, to receive resources. Um, we'd, we'd love to have you. Thanks, James. Okay. So um, we have a few minutes. Do we want to open up for any uh, questions from the group? That would be great. Turn off your mics and let's talk. Well, I can tell you my son did lose his internet because he's near Davis. So whoever mentioned the cutout curb, <laughs> it hit all, the, all of Davis, I guess. Oh no. <laughs> it sure did. It got the whole county, Susan. Oh. My son teaches at the Davis Waldorf uh, School, so he probably is going to give me a story when he gets home. Oh, poor thing. 
one of our oh. speakers this morning who was um, already actually recorded for the Inclusion Collaborative Conference lives in Davis and she was trying to watch it with her family and it cut off. So she's like, oh. what? But thank goodness we had already recorded her. Good. You know, we were talking before, you know, leading up to this and, and for those of you that are working with teachers and district, I mean, we all know how overloaded everybody is. Yeah. Right. And we're all looking for something that to start thinking about what, what, what could we do? And I think if you add the, if you, if you go straight at them with the guidelines or something, you're going to scare people because it's like, what, what is this other thing? But a conversation that I was lucky to be a part of this you know, last year at the Cass National Faculty Convenings, we were talking about, you know, we, we expect engagement. We expect learning and we write goals for that. But we expect engagement. We don't necessarily write goals around how we want the kids to feel and how we want them to be engaged in learning. And we don't, and we expect them to, to have executive functions and to keep track of things and meet the deadlines. But we don't necessarily write goals for executive functions. Traditionally, we tend to just write those learning goals of what they're going to produce, but not the path, you know, not the way that they're going to keep up and meet and meet that learning goal. So one thing to th maybe think about with folks, and, and I think often, at least in my experience, educators, we're real happy to take uh, some credit when they do well, but less so when they struggle. But say, if we're going to expect it, then we got to write a goal for it. And then if we write a goal for it, then it's on us to figure out how we're going to support it. So if we just thought about, you know, in this distance learning, we need them to get, well, what, what level of engagement do you want? And so how are you going to help the kid reach that? What level of, you know, what, what are you asking of them to, to navigate? Okay, so what are you going to put in the design that helps them? You don't have to say UDL. You don't have to say all that stuff. I mean, we all get it. Mm -mm. But that might be one way to just start some of those conversations around, well, how do I get kids to keep up with this stuff? Well, what have you thought about in your design? Because if you expect it, you got to support it. I actually think this is a perfect time to start introducing UDL and just use the word engagement because that's what everyone is saying they can't do right now. And so we're hoping to get in that way and to start supporting engagement. And then that opens the UDL door, in my opinion. So I think this is the perfect time. And I do think, I know teachers are overwhelmed, but they also have extra time for trainings. They don't tell you that, but it's there because they're only teaching in the mornings. And with all the all of us, you know, having to shift, you know, some of people have been doing distance for a while, but a lot of the county offices and the SELPAs and folks shifting to digital, now they're offering options that just weren't there anymore. So maybe the teachers yeah. were always available for professional learning on their prep, but not for a whole day. Well, now yeah. if we give you something you can consume on your prep or whenever, you, then, then they it. have more options. Yeah, I agree. And I think, right, that sense of, feeling overwhelmed is uh, that's where I keep hearing over and over and I actually think UDL is a antidote to that because absolutely people feel overwhelmed because there's so much and they don't know where to choose from they don't know where to start and they feel helpless like they're not doing anything for their kids and mm -hmm. the UDL framework is just such a nice way to give some structure to those thoughts that are all over the place and really help somebody focus on the things that matter with with kids yeah absolutely Where can you put in those learning curb cuts without knocking out power to an entire <laughs> county? <laughs> uh, Fred, we've had a couple people ask to have the uh, PowerPoint link reposted so they can get the dates. Oh, sure. Thank you. And um, especially they want the three dates uh, um, for right. the UDL network meetings. O October 29, uh, February 18, and May 18. And I'm going to you can repost put the link them. in. Right. Thanks. I'm going to put the link in right now. Okay. To everyone. Thanks so much. Of course. Um, I also added uh, uh, the UDL toolkit that we put together in mm. our county and um, wanted that to share that with everyone. In fact, that's what I presented at the UDL uh, IRN uh, On Demand Summit. So it was a lot of fun. So here we go. I just put in the uh, Google Slides again for you. Um, Good, great. Well, everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> so um, 
as being the MC today, I was honored to be asked to do this. This is one of my <laughs> first times doing this. And, you are um, awesome. <laughs> but it, you know what? It, it, it is, uh, is so fun. Um, I'm, I'm better off script than I am on script, so I know that. Um, but um, it has been a pleasure <laughs> to be, be with all of you. And you're like my extended family here. So I, yeah. I do really so appreciate you because I spend so much time, it seems like, with you guys. <laughs> well, I so, have to just say that James was an inspiration to me because I went to his boot camp mm -hmm. and I took away so much in that those two days that I was just like, if everyone had had those two days, they would have walked away just going, uh, we can do this. So it was really great. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you. Oh, yeah. thank you. That made my mm -hmm. day. Yeah. No, it was great. Yeah, we could clone James. It would be great. <laughs> And sung too. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. They're both amazing. Okay. Well, uh, Kathy, do you have any closing remarks? I just want to say thank you, everybody, for um, uh, attending. I'm thinking maybe we'll put this on our uh, YouTube link that we have through the Inclusion Collaborative because it's actually part of our conference. So um, we will have this uh, link if you guys want it. And uh, the PowerPoint, thank you very much for for sending that Google link with us. Well, but it's one, really great to see everybody on screen. Oh, right. you're amazing. I have one, one last thing that I didn't mention because I put it in resources about learningdesign.org. Mm -hmm. And um, there is, you know, you can explore, you should create an account and get in there. Um, and they have credential programs in there. And I I've, I've did the first one and I'm hoping to do the next one when we can get back to some kind of reality of normal, you know, in-person stuff. But anyway, I strongly recommend you going there. And I was very honored that they wanted to put the toolkit in the, as a resource there. It was quite nice. So um, I welcome you to be sure you've, you've never been there. Get into learning design. James okay. has a lot of his stuff there oh. and it is uh, wonderful. It is, it is an amazing, and again, Fred, it's like going on a vacation too, because you get to go to other countries. <laughs> but that is a very important resource for everybody to check out, definitely. Yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of information there. In fact, my other role is a professor at the University of Kansas, and I've actually been going, using learning design for my students, uh, my pre-service uh, educators that are gonna be actually graduating next year. Um, and uh, using learning design as a primary mechanism to serve them and give them the resources they need. That's awesome. I'm gonna check it out as soon as I'm finished. <laughs> well, we're gonna give everyone the gift of uh, eight minutes and enjoy the rest of your evening. And thank you all for participating in our first ever California UDL Coalition Meetup. Woo! Wow, how all exciting. Right. Thank you, Kathy, I miss you. Bye, all. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.